Hello, my dear yoga friend. This practice will be a sweet, tender self-care practice. So we're going to begin lying down. If you have a bolster, you can use one, but it's not required. So just make your way onto your back. And when you get there, you're going to join the soles of your feet. You can do this with props or not. And just go ahead and lie back. Let your knees open to the sides. If it's a little uncomfortable in your hips, you can uh, wedge something under each knee to assist. And uh, I like this with my the bolster with my head higher, especially if I'm feeling a little bit sad or heavy hearted because that sort of uplift helps um, balance out that sorrow and heaviness. So it either way works, flat is okay too, but just thought I'd give you a reason why. And we're just gonna rest here for a few minutes without really trying to do anything at all. So there's no need to control the breath or fix anything. And just use this time to come back to yourself, no matter what's happening, just to be there for you. And over the next minute or so, really just let your body weight settle onto the floor or onto your bolster if you're using one so that you're letting yourself be held up. And while we rest for just a moment or two longer, I want to introduce to you something I learned from Kristen Neff, not from her directly, but from her work. That is a self-compassion practice, and I'll sprinkle this through. I'm not gonna go into too much depth yet. But it's a three-part practice, and the first part is to just recognize that if something is up emotionally speaking that you acknowledge that this is a moment of suffering. So just turn some attention to caring for that part of yourself. If you're having discomfort or you're heavy hearted or experiencing grief, Just acknowledge this is a moment of suffering. Don't try to fix it. Just another three breaths, natural breaths here. Focus on the inhale and letting go of the weight of the body on the exhale. Two more cycles of breath. And start to roll your head from side to side to stretch your fingers and your hands, your wrists.
And when you're ready to move, try to roll to your side and resist the urge to sit up. You can just take one knee over to the other and roll off your prop. Just pause on your side or readjust so your head is supported. And we, we were calming the nervous system a little bit there, just settling. So that's why we take time to sit up because we're trying not to jar uh, any of that calming that we've created. And then once you arrive, you're gonna just tuck your feet over to the left. I'm not mirroring you, but the feet over to the same side. And then you're gonna twist away from your feet, so to the right, whatever way you're twi twisting. And instead of really cranking with your arms, just arms rather, just be sensitive to that inner presence, that inner awareness that it's so um, soft that if you overdo it, it will contract. It's like a little baby bird. So just the first edge of sensation of stretching, just pause there. Allow your left hip to drop down your gaze to be softly toward the floor or with the eyes closed. Nourishing breath. And then begin to untwist. And just sweep the feet around over to the other side. It's not complicated movement, just make it simple. And Again, twisting this time to the left. I'm not mirroring you. It might look like I'm going backwards to what I'm saying. But not aiming to go for the maximum rotation, but just this very subtle like first edge of um, feeling something. And then being with that tender edge, just like you're being with this um, internal landscape perhaps there's emotional intensity underneath and just acknowledging this is a moment of of suffering this feeling is a challenge maybe and the second part of this self-compassion work from Kristen Neff is um, it's normal it's okay to feel this way nothing's wrong with us that everyone experiences suffering so instead of pushing the body to do more just hold that little soft edge and breathe one more nourishing breath to make space for whatever's happening for you right now and when you come out you're going to just turn to all fours <clears throat> and I want you to imagine when you place your wrists, it's like you have one hand bone and one lower arm bone. That's not the real anatomy. There's a lot more bones than that. But as if you could stack your forearm bones on top of your palms, on top of your hands, so that the one hand bone and the one forearm bone meet in a balanced way. So for me, because I have fairly tight wrists, that means I have to put them forward more than a, a classic all fours position. And so just play with that and start to move around freely in your all fours position. Might be cat or cow or some hula hooping in the ribs. And so this um, description that I've given you of sort of stacking a joint, we talked about wrist, uh, there, but we could do it with the elbow as well. It's called centration. You're centering the bones one on top of the other. And so you might think of it like um, no part of the joint is over or under stretching or over or under working. That there's a sense of evenness all around.
So maybe feel that up into the elbows too. Do you need to bend your elbows or straighten your elbows to create that sense of centering uh, the two uh, arm bones? It's really three, but the lower and the upper stacked one on top of the other. Then start to transition into puppy pose. So hips stacked above knees, walk the hands forward, dip the head and chest down and place the forehead on something. It could be on the ground or on a prop if it feels like the floor is too far away. And just use your inner awareness, that inner awareness of your joints, your space. And the reason I'm calling attention to this today, I mean, it's always um, helpful for the joints, but is when there's a sense of stability and balance in the joint, the nervous system can relax. Like, oh, I don't need to protect that joint anymore. And some of what we're doing today is working on the neural level, the nervous system level, to help us practice self-care and self-compassion. So allow the upper back to soften, the back of the heart to relax so that the chest can be easing down toward the floor. Take another breath or so. And then you're gonna slither forward onto your belly. When you get there, you're just gonna tiptoe your hands um, all the way out. You can put your forehead on the floor. I've gotta stay up just a little bit because my mic is on my shirt and it'll make a lot of weird noise if I put it on the floor. Crawl your fingertips forward, stretching all the way out. You might even shuffle your ribs forward away from your hips so you're nice and long like you're flying on the floor, like flying face down through the sky. From here, you're going to rotate your palms to face one another. So your thumbs are pointing up toward the sky. You're doing, a, this is called external rotation. And you can just rest there for a brief moment, allowing a different stretch in the shoulders. The inner creases of the elbows will face each other. The outer shoulders wrap down. And this might be enough stretch for you, right? We're not going for maximum today. We're trying to be a little softer with ourselves because when there's a lot of um, internal intensity that's happening, the outer body needs uh, usually needs less intensity to cope. But if you do feel like you want more, there's another option here, and it would be to lift the hands off the floor, join them like you're going to clap or pray, and then tip the tips of the fingers up so the elbows are bent. You're pointing your fingers toward the sky, at least initially. And you can move your elbows a little closer to one another and farther forward away from your shoulders. And I'm doing it, so if you need clarification, you can always look. And again, you can put your forehead right down on the floor, tucking the chin in so you're not smushing your nose. I'm hovering my head a little because I'm trying to make space for the mic, which is underneath me right now. So this is um, going to stretch the back of your arms, your triceps, the shoulder blade area. So see if you can hold it a little bit longer and allow those areas to let go of gripping. And oftentimes when things are feeling a little bit overwhelming, the nervous system goes into protection mode. And that can be felt in overall muscle tension. And that's why we're trying to stay a little bit away from the edge of intensity so that we're not 
just increasing that feedback loop. So just feel if that's happening for you. You can back off if it is, so you're working less hard, feeling less in your physical form. Okay, to come out, just straighten the elbows, drop the hands. Walk them back on your mat under your shoulders, but go wide so they're kind of hanging off the outer edges of your mat. And then you're going to push into the floor and just peel up ever so slightly, like maybe a little baby cobra, and then roll back down. Do that two more times. Let's inhale to lift, using the breath to help us buoy up and the exhale to release back to floor. Last one, inhale, inflating back of the lungs to create some lightness, not maximum lift at all, exhale and drop down, all right? So it's okay to use effort, like we can use our muscles, but we just don't need to push super hard. Okay, push yourself back up to all fours and rock your weight back into child's pose. you're in child's pose for a few more breaths and send your your sense of of hearing your listening skills out to the space around you and see if you can hear any kind of sound that might be um, soothing or enjoyable or peaceful Or maybe it's just quiet. Maybe you like the quiet to help you relax. I know I do. Start to um, back yourself upright so that your head is off the floor. <clears throat> Lift up to all fours, so just temporarily, and then you're going to step forward with your right foot. Take it a little wide so it's closer to the outer edge of your mat. You can lift up onto your fingertips or blocks here if it's hard to reach the ground. And we're gonna rock that right knee open to the right. And the hips can go a little right. And we're gonna rock the hips left and bring that right knee up. So just a little swaying from side to side. And just like you were listening for something that feels kind of soothing or peaceful or good, try to stay within a range of movement from side to side where that's also happening. In fact, I just noticed that my knee was not feeling good, so I'm patting it, right? So we're, we're attending to cues that are supporting uh, feeling good, better, or safe. The next time you're rocking a little bit to the left, place your right hand on your right knee, push down, lift your waist a little bit, and twist to the right. And again, it doesn't have to be that far. Just you'll start to feel maybe the front of your left thigh stretch or your belly stretch. And you know, if your wrist hurts or your hand hurts, you can put a fist like I have it. You might not be able to see that well, but you could also put your um, forearm on a block, that would also work. So stay in that gentle rotation. Use the eyes now looking out into your space. Is there a color that feels nourishing or, or supportive or beautiful to you? I'm looking past the camera at a tree that's outside because green feels good to me right now. Untwist, step back right foot. And we'll just switch to the other side. So left foot forward. It's going a little wide on the mat. And you can even turn it out a little bit. It's near the pinky toes kind of on that outer mat edge. And then the movement is a left, right, right, left pattern where the hips sway from side to side and we're letting the knee peel open 
and rock. So the hip is doing external rotation, just like the arm was doing it earlier. So the third um, piece of the self-compassion practice is, may I be kind to myself? So step one, this is a moment of suffering. Step two, suffering is normal. Everyone experiences it, nothing's wrong with you. Step three, may I be kind to myself and care for myself in my time of need. Go into the twist next. So left hand on the knee or maybe your forearm there and a gentle um, rotation, turning left, but definitely not to the maximum. And trying to sense where that edge is, where you can really stay kind of more open in the pose, less um, protective, right? So the nervous system, it's always looking to either connect or to protect. It's kind of wired that way. And so if we give it these conditions of self-care and self-compassion and safety, it's going to be easier to connect with ourselves, to connect with others, to connect with spirit. Okay, come on back out and step that left foot back. And then go ahead and lie on your back again. Just If you do have props, you can move those all off to the side and out of the way. So the way I kind of interpret that third piece, may I be kind to myself, I also, this is just like my own interpretation, is may I be patient because sometimes it takes my body a while to let go of that protective um, mode. Right. And in the process, we can attend to cues of safety around us. That's why I was having you look for those things. Okay, we're gonna do another neural practice here. So you're gonna take your hands and interlace your fingers, lift your head and slip your hands behind your head, kind of down a little bit towards the lower edge of your skull. Um, and then you put your head back down. So you're cradling your head in your hands and your hands are interlaced. So when I do it and they're a little down lower, I have my index finger wrapped near the base of the skull. And my thumbs are kind of lightly touching my neck. So this comes from the work of Stanley Rosenberg. It's, um, it's gonna help tone the vagus nerve, which is the, the ventral vagal branch is what helps us with um, connecting, resting, opening, letting go, those sorts of things. So legs however you want. And then you're gonna look just straight up with your eyes at a natural position with your eyes open. Your elbows are on the floor, everything, the whole head, on the hands, everything is just softly resting back. And then you're gonna move not your head, just your eyeballs in the sockets, just your eyes to the right. And don't go to your maximum because it'll make your eyes hurt. You might get a headache if you do that. Just a little ways to the right where it's a comfortable distance and find something that you can fix your eyes on. One point that you can just look at, like I have some texture on my ceiling. Thank God it's not cottage cheese ceiling, but it's still, I'm finding a textured spot, I'm looking at that, and we're just gonna stay here, and the suggestion is 30 to 60 seconds. We don't really know how this crossing the midline with the eyes works, but um, some of the thoughts behind the theory are that it's related to what we do in REM sleep when the eyes rapid eye movement sleep, they go back and forth. And something about crossing the midline uh, affects things on a neural level, but also because we're um, touching base of the skull, just keep your eyes over there. Don't let them move. You can blink, but like just pin them to the side. But touching the neck and the top of the, the neck where the neck meets the skull is where the brain stem is. And that's where these cranial nerves like the vagus nerve come from. So what we're looking for is subtle. We're looking for a subtle change that's tipping us in the direction of the sympathetic response, the ventral vagal specifically, uh, sorry, parasympathetic response. Um, and you might feel that as um, an increase in saliva, um, urge to swallow or yawn, a deep sigh, like an uh, auto automatic exhale, 
some kind of letting go of muscular tension that could be global or your whole body or a local one spot. Okay, good. Bring your eyes back to center and let's just close the eyes for a moment. So we've just done the right side for something like a minute. It usually takes at least that long, 30 to 60 seconds. It might take longer. So in the interim here, just keep your eyes closed and then um, use your hands and your elbows, pick up your elbows and hands and, or your elbows and your head and tip your chin towards your chest and just stretch the back of your neck. Just do a little neck stretch while we're waiting before we do the other side. Okay, put your head back down. You can change your hand clasp or shake out your hands for a second. We're just doing the same thing, but with the eyes going the other way. So interlaced fingers, cupping the back of the skull kind of low. So we're kind of meeting the brainstem area, the neck, i.e. the neck. Once you're situated, open your eyes, keep the eyes soft. Don't turn your head, just take your eyes, look to the left. So at eye level, you know, you're looking straight up, look left, find a spot to stare at that's um, not too far left that you have to turn your head or you're giving yourself a headache. Just let your eyes blink naturally, soft focus, but um, not moving, don't let the eyes move, just pan them over there and we just wait. And so we're practicing this self-care, this way of um, listening inwardly. So listening to the cues that the body might give where the parasympathetic, that's the resting side of the nervous system um, or the, the more balanced connected side can come online. So you might feel a sense of ease. That might feel like heaviness, like, oh, everything just let go and I got sleepy. Or it might feel like lightness, like some kind of weight was lifted. It might be uh, the urge to yawn, to drool, kind of like when you're falling asleep, that letting go. See what you notice that's a little more subtle. Resist the urge to come out, even though this is weird, just trust me, it works. Be patient with yourself. This is a moment of suffering the body's experienced, you've experienced, nothing's wrong with you. Just be kind to yourself, be patient, compassionate. Good, close the eyes, let the eyes relax to a neutral position. Again, exhale, pick up the head, pull the neck into flexion, just dipping the chin toward the chest to stretch the back of the body. Breathe into the back ribs, back lungs, exhale, release. Then we'll finish here by hugging the knees in. You're gonna hold with your hands but once you get your knees in your hands, you're gonna exhale and draw your waist down. See if you can press your waist down so that your back imprints more firmly on your yoga mat. Imagine that you could take your two front hip bones and draw them toward one another, like you're wearing a, a low belt that's helping Pull the waistline in. In fact, you are. It's your transverse abdominals. So we're assisting with the hands, but we're asking the belly to do some work. Similar to this joint stacking earlier, this you know, engaging muscular support in a soft way lets the nervous system know that there's some something happening, some support is going on, that it does not need to overwork and protect. So subtle engagement of low belly. I mean, I'm still talking, so I can still breathe, not holding so much that I'm shaking or doing an ab workout. Just turning on that little bit of support on a muscular level. 
like I'm hugging myself, even hugging my nervous system. You can stay with hands as is if you want to just try no hands for a second using just your belly muscles, not even taking the legs out, just kind of keeping the knees tucked in toward the chest. Take one more moment and then you can use your hands if you took them off to relax and then release the feet down. Place your hands on your belly or your chest. You can either tip the knees in on one another or straighten the legs out and just use your hands to send that message of self-care to your body. You know, the nervous system, this is autonomic, the stuff we're talking about today. It's happening without you trying and it's doing it for your survival. So I know it's hard. I know I get frustrated that my body holds tension, but I have to remember that it's trying to protect me from something that's been challenging. And so maybe this is a reminder for you to reframe. The body is just doing biologically what it's programmed to do. Thank you, body, for protecting me. Exhale, just a sigh out the mouth. If you have your eyes closed, let them blink. And again, just attending to cues of safety, cues of connection, cues of beauty, well-being. What can you see that feels supportive, or nourishing, beautiful? Let the eyes wander to that as you awaken. And you can again, like you did earlier, just roll to the side. Pause. Okay. Same instruction as before. If you just sit straight up, it's very jarring to not only the back, but to the neural networks, <laughs> all the nervous system, the mind. Go slow, push with your hands, roll up, try to bring your head up last. Just take a moment sitting, don't rush up to standing. It's just like step by step going back to, um, I don't even know what to call it, life. <laughs> but that what we just did is life too, so. Anyway, um, you can close your eyes if you want or if it feels safer to you, keep them open, continuing to look around you at the space of protection and safety you've created. And if in fact you feel like you, you gave yourself um, that sense of letting go or that care, your body feels different and it feels um, supported, just take note of maybe what that feels like or where you feel it in your body. And that simple acknowledgement, it's going to help you to recognize that state in other times of your life. And that can help open the, that um, room of self-care. That, that What I mean by room is more time spent in it. So I hope that this has been helpful for you in um, your need for self-care, for self-compassion, and with any um, struggles that you might be having right now. Um, thank you so much for practicing with me. I really appreciate it. And I just want to mention one last thing that I'm, I'm going to start putting out maybe uh, every other week instead of once a week. It's just a time management thing and I've got to put my energy towards um, things that are financially um, supporting me as well. So I'm not disappearing. I'll see you next time and thank you.